Retrieve the horn of Jorgen Wincola. A quest I'm sure we have all been through enough times to pass over without a second thought. But have you ever taken a moment to ask, who exactly is Jorgen Wincola? Hailing from Skyrim in the First Era, Jürgen Windcaller was a Nord chief, later hailed as a hero. He was the founder of the Greybeards we all know, a master of the voice, same as we are within Skyrim. After the hideous defeat at the Battle of Red Mountain, Jürgen spent seven years pondering that defeat, concluding it was a punishment by the gods for misuse of the voice, or Thum as he refers to it. Jürgen then developed the Way of the Voice, a pacifist creed that preached the voice only be used in reverence of the gods. This turned to pacifism earned him the new title of Jürgen the Calm. He was a great war leader of the ancient Nord, master of the voice or tongue. After the disaster at Red Mountain, where the Nord army was annihilated, he spent many years pondering the meaning of that terrible defeat. He finally came to realize that the gods had punished the Nords for their arrogant and blasphemous misuse of the voice. He was the first to understand that the voice should be used solely for the glory and worship of the gods, not the glory of men. Jürgen Windcaller's mastery of the voice eventually overcame all opposition, and the way of the voice was I would like to note that the Battle of Red Mountain is of the most significant historical events within the history of Skyrim. However, we don't know much about its details. According to A Pocket Guide to the Empire Skyrim, this mastery over the voice allowed Jürgen to swallow the voices of 17 other users of Thum for three days until they had exhausted themselves out against him. These 17 individuals would later become his disciples. Shortly after this is when the Grey Beards were formed and built their place of study near to the peak of the throat of the world, naming it High Hrothgar. This monastery would from then on be used as a place of study in the way of the voice in efforts to master it just as Jürgen had. The way of the voice was the philosophy that those able to use the voice not abuse that power and instead only use it in ways that the goddess who gifted that power would approve. The god who is said to have gifted this great power to the few Nords who wield it was the goddess Kain. It is believed that if they were to abuse this gifted power, she would then punish them justly. This location was chosen as it provides a place of isolation so one can focus solely on their studies of Thum while also being nearly as high as possible within Skyrim, stretching closer to the absolute peak of the throat of the world, the top of the largest, most sacred mountain in Skyrim. This height brings them all the much closer to the god they hope to show reverence and respect to. As one ascends the mountain towards the monastery, they will pass by many small stone sculptures adorned with a written language seen nowhere else within the entirety of the Elder Scrolls franchise. The monuments are meant to recount the story of the Greybeards. After reaching High Hrothgar ourselves, the Greybeards task us to go to Jürgen's tomb, which is located beneath an ancient Nord ruin called Ustingrav, in order to retrieve an artifact said to have gone missing, the Horn of Jürgen Windcaller. This begins the quest of the same name. Ustingrav can be roughly translated from its real-world counterpart of Old Icelandic into the Great grave, showing how he was once revered by those of his time period as a hero among men and a truly great individual. Making your way through the tomb, you will spot many strange stones with symbols of the dragon language all over them. These are notably not found anywhere else in the entirety of the game. One will also be able to locate a wall within this place for the shout become ethereal, possibly hinting that Jürgen had attempted to use his thum in a way to become an ethereal being, no longer bound to this world by flesh that ate Ages. This, however, is strictly speculation on my part. Continuing through the dungeon, you will finally come across the Tomb of Jürgen Windkull, which, strangely, has Daedric characters engraved into it rather than the language of the Nords, his people. While these Daedric runes just translate into Windcaller, it is still a choice that was made to have some significance. This is because this language has only been used by the Nords to worship the Daedric gods or communicate with fellow followers of those gods. The Nords have only commonly used English dragon language, or in rare cases, the Old Icelandic, as used in the naming of Jürgen's tomb. As the player moves past this sarcophagus, they will soon realize that the horn they were sent here to retrieve has already been taken by Delphine of Riverwood, as stated in the note she left behind telling us to meet her to collect the horn. After retrieving this, we take it back to the Greybeards, where they will encircle us and perform a sort of ritual before calling us Ysmir, Dragon of the North, and sending us on our way. And between us? 
prepare yourself. Few can withstand the unbridled voice of the Greybeards. But you are ready. the voice of the Greybeards and pass through unscathed. High Hrothgar is open to you. Ah, I sometimes forget you are not versed in the dragon tongue as we are. This is a rough translation. Long has the storm crown languished, with no worthy brow to sit upon. By our breath, we bestow it now to you, in the name of Kine, in the name of Shore, and in the name of Atmora of old. You are Ismir now, the dragon of the north. Hearken to it. Oddly enough, however, in the original version of Skyrim, the horn will still be in our inventory, and those with your wits about you might think about bringing it back to the resting place of its rightful owner. The horn of Jurgen Windcaller is just that, a horn from a creature who once bore it. We can make a few connections to speculate where and who exactly it came from, however. The horn had great meaning to Jurgen, great enough to adorn the very top of his final resting place. Perhaps it was even a gift from a friend whom he trusted and cared about greatly. If that is the case, then there is one character who it could possibly be, one dragon that is. If we journey to the very top of the Throat of the World, we will find Parthenax, a kind dragon who communes with the dragonborn and is quite old when we meet him. He also appears with the tip of one of his horns missing. May this have been a gift from himself to Jurgen? We have no way of knowing for certain. If one returns with the horn to Ustengrav and crawls all the way back through the dungeon to his sarcophagus, you'll be able to place it back into the hand on top for the reward of a dragon's soul as thanks. This is, however, complicated, as only dragon Dragonborn and dragons themselves are shown to be able to possess and utilize dragon souls, both things Jurgen Windcaller has never been confirmed to be. There are, however, mentions in other historical records within Skyrim of the War of Red Mountain that state there was a dragonborn present, the problem being that this person is referred to as Ysmir, not Jurgen Windcaller. And if you can recall, that is the same name as what Arngir calls us after the shout ceremony. Going back to the note about Jurgen swallowing the voices of 17 others, there are also coincidentally just as many Daedric gods. This is speculation, however, this may be connected to why there were Daedric characters etched into his casket. And as you would recall, back to the ceremony I mentioned with the Greybeards, they shouted at us and we absorbed those shouts, just as it's written Jurgen did those of his 17 disciples. All of this leads me to believe that the Ysmir written about in storybooks such as the Five Songs of King Wolfhoth is one in the same as Jurgen Windcaller. This is mere speculation, however. It seems to make sense in many ways. Even though Jurgen Windcaller has long since passed by the time the events of the game take place, we are able to meet and speak to this man of legend. Much nearer the conclusion of the main story of Skyrim, the player will be tasked with entering Sovngarde to defeat Alduin once and for all. While here, the player must discover and enter into the Hall of Valor to call together heroes of yore to join forces against Alduin who is awaiting them right outside. Here is where the player is able to speak to and interact with Jurgen Windcaller himself. He may only have a singular line of dialogue when interacted with, but it is impactful. Fate drives you, but you follow your own path. Choose wisely, lest you wander into evil. 
In conclusion, to answer the question, who is Jurgen Windkoller? He is, or rather was, many things. He was a man who stood tall to fight for Red Mountain, yet was struck with defeat, leading him to change for the better and create the Way of the Voice, which is still practiced today. He was possibly a dragonborn just like ourselves, with even greater mastery over his Thum. He was truly a hero to Skyrim and its people. If you enjoyed, it would be a great help if you subscribed for future lore videos on the Elder Scrolls, Fallout, and even the Souls series, including Elden Ring. And if there's anything I missed, please leave a comment to let me know. Thank you.